My name is Robin Rumble, and I work as an engineer at Oak Ridge National Labs. And my thing is radios and electronics. And when I started flying paramotor, the first thing I noticed was my GPS didn't work too well. And then another thing, you ever have an FRS radio, you tune it on a subcode and you can't hear anything ever again? Okay. Radio frequency interference is why and electromagnetic interference is why. Now there's a difference between the interference that I picked up with the antenna and the, the uh, interference I picked up with the radio. The interference that I picked up with the antenna was electromagnetic. It will couple into the circuits inside your radio or your GPS or your FRS and they'll get into the circuit itself. The pulses you're seeing out of this radio are just what the radio is picking up. Those are on the frequency and that's radio frequency interference, RFI. What what it's caused by is, of course, as the magnet passes the coil, it generates a huge voltage, about 30,000 volts, okay? And that causes your spark plug to arc over the gap and, and fire your fuel, all right? Well, that also generates a radio signal, right? And that radio signal comes out your ignition lead and, and gets into the radio and anything else you've got, okay? So how do you get rid of it? Why does a resistor and a spark plug help you? And that combined with a, uh, a characteristic called capacitance causes the spike to widen out a little bit and not be as sharp and reduce the interference a little bit, okay? So what I've done is I've put together in a little kit here everything you need to do what I'm going to do right now, and I'm going to show you how all this works, and I'm going to make one, okay? I decided to try something else. I took a piece of coaxial cable, which this is, and you know it's got braid shield on it. All right. Well, I just pulled out the inner conductor and slid this over the ignition wire. And then I soldered it to this guy. And wow, almost all the interference was gone. You don't want to try it on the other end, though. Okay, and I didn't want to cause a big problem for myself by trying to cut it loose of the coil because that's sealed around that coil so that the, uh, the, the spark voltage won't get out and arc over down at the coil. All right, and what I'm going to do is just push this shield back and push it back over the outer sheath like that. Okay, all right. Then on the other end, I'm going to trim back about a quarter of an inch. Now I want to be able to put a ground wire on it. So I'm going to solder a little piece of wire to the end. And I have one inch small piece of wire. Now, if you've got a tachometer on your unit, and I don't know anybody that doesn't, Take your tachometer wire and wrap the three or four turns that you normally wrap around uh, the ignition wire right around this center conductor. All right. Now I'm going to put this over this. Do you include a little soldering in the kit? Well, no, I didn't actually, but I could, I guess. <laughs> now I already have my tach wire. I already wound it down along here. And you see, it's not coming out very far. That's not good. If that's the way yours is, you want it to come out at least half an inch. What you're going to do then is you're going to insert the spark plug cap, twist it back on. Okay? And it twists on, just like the other one, twist it off. And you twist it on until it's nice and tight. Okay? Then I'm going to pull this braid back over it. It'll take a little minute to work it through. But you'll have enough braid to reach to that uh, middle part of the cap. And I'm going to solder the braid to the side of the spark plug cap. 
and try and burn my fingers as best I can. Then you bring the heat shrink back up. You cover the whole mess and it will shrink all the way down. Nice and neat on that coax. This spark plug cap will grab tight on the spark plug, and I mean tight. It will be hard to pull off. So if you have an engine with a spark plug on the bottom, you don't have to worry about this cap coming off, believe me. One more thing we got to do. Remember the ground wire that I hooked on? All right, this ground wire, I don't know if you can see it, but this ground wire has to be hooked to ground somewhere near the coil. And there just happens to be, if you can see right here on the coil, a, uh, a soldered connection already. Now we got a shielded spark, or a shielded uh, resistor cap. We've got a nice shield all the way down and it's grounded at the other end. Now the question is, will it work? That's a good sign, it started. <laughs> Hear any? See any? Maybe a few but certainly not what we had before, right? Okay, let's look at the other channel. For the antenna. Yeah, that's just a broken cable. Gone. Now you can listen to your airband radio and the flight controller won't be drowned out. The family channel radio, you know what the sub-channels are. They're not channels at all. They're just a little audio tone that's added to your transmission. And when the radio at the other end detects that little audio tone, it turns on the speaker, okay? When you're trying to receive somebody, when you're flying and you're trying to hear somebody, they turn on their little sub-channel tone and you're trying to decode it, the noise from this will get into the decoder and it won't decode and it won't turn on the speaker. Conversely, if you try to transmit, this noise will get into the signal that you're transmitting and it will go down to the other radio and it'll get into the sub-channel decoder there and it'll keep it from opening the speaker. Every time I do something, you know, somebody will say, I've got a problem, can you help me? And I'll show them how to solve it. And they say, well, that's well and fine, but where do you get the parts? And why don't you just put a kit together? So I put a kit together, all right? These are $25, and they include everything. Sometimes after you've done all this, you still have the interference, and then you need to really replace your kill switch wires, all right? With shielded wire going all the way down so that you don't have that problem and I've included in the kit wire that's shielded for your kill switch. Well, that's a 500 volt pulse that's coming out there and that can generate interference as well. And, you know, I recommend you take it in stages because some motors are more easily cured than others. First, try a resistor plug. If that doesn't work, then try the cap. If that doesn't work, then try the shielding of the cable. Uh, you know, and you stop when you find something that works. $25 for a kit or $12 for one of these. Thank you. This is just a result of experimenting over time. Wait, I, I went on this. Yes.